Hello and welcome to Movie Central, the place to talk about movies, TV shows based on movies, toys based on movies, games based on movies, and theme park rides based on movies. I'm your host, Mr. CCS, and this with me is my pet gorilla, George. Let's talk about Universal Studios. This amazing studio has contributed to us fans for over 100 years. It started off with monster movies like Frankenstein, The Mummy, Dracula, Creature from the Black Lagoon, among many other memorable monster movies. However, they started making big box office movies. Movies like Earthquake, Jaws, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Back to the Future, The Mummy Remake from 1999, King Kong, Despicable Me, and my personal favorite, Jurassic Park. And don't worry, I'll make a review of each and every movie I just listed. However, where Universal kind of loses its popularity is when they make superhero movies. There's terrible movies like that god-awful Howard the Duck movie from 1986, and then there's somewhat acclaimed movies with Darkman. But when it comes to incredibly well-known superheroes, they don't get the best reviews. But... Are they any good in the end? That's why I'm here. Today I'm going to give you my very, 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 very biased and very, 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 very honest opinion on the 2008 Universal and Marvel Studios film The Incredible Hulk. Bet you wonder why it's not on Disney Plus because it's a Universal property. Huh. <laughs> In this new beginning, scientist Bruce Banner, played by Edward Norton, desperately hunts for a cure to a gamma radiation poisoning that transformed him into the Hulk. Living in the shadows, cut off from a life he knew and the woman he loves, Betty Ross, played by Liv Tyler, Banner struggles to avoid the obsessive pursuit of his nemesis, General Thunderbolt Ross, played by William Hurt, and the military machinery that seeks to capture him and brutally exploit his power. As all three grapple with the secrets that led to the Hulk's creation, they are confronted with a monstrous new adversary known as the Abomination, played by Tim Roth, whose destructive strength exceeds even Hulk's own. One scientist must make an agonizing final choice, Accept a peaceful life as Bruce Banner or find heroism in the creature he holds inside, the Incredible Hulk. Wow, that story is pretty beefy, isn't it? Well, surprisingly, I find it quite interesting. Now, keep in mind that this is not perfect. There is one point where the movie completely slows down. That being when Banner and Ross are in New York at the lab of Dr. Samuel Stearns. It starts out with potential, with that amazing, cool Hulk transformation. But then it just leads to a huge exposition dump. Yeah, I don't really like those. That aside, I really enjoy the story. But it gets really long and agitating for just a little bit. Let's talk about the characters. We have Edward Norton as our leading character. While many people prefer the latter interpretations of the character in this particular universe, just like Iron Man, I do enjoy where he starts, again, much like Rhodey from Iron Man. Norton as Bruce Banner seems like the right man for the job. When I say that, he is the perfect man to play a man who is at war with himself. See the movie Fight Club for more clarification. He's also giving an incredible performance through motion capture of the Hulk, but we'll get there later. A love interest in this movie is Betty Ross, and I've got to say, ever since I saw her as Princess Arwen in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I think Liv Tyler is a very talented actress. 
I know, I know. She just uses a love interest. But I feel like she did a, the best job in this movie. And she had a lot of emotion to convey. Unlike some other character. <sighs> okay, now... We have General Ross, the stern, mean old general who in the comics became the Red Hulk. Here he is portrayed as the general who wants to accomplish his job of hunting down the man who accidentally hurt his daughter. Ugh, jeez man, it was a freak accident. That aside, I think he was a pretty cool general and a far, far, far superior version to Sam Elliott's portrayal in the 2003 Hulk movie. Okay, now we have the villain. Emil Blonsky, a.k.a. The Abomination. Okay, for the first five minutes he's on screen, I think he's perfect, but then he gets really boring for the next 20 minutes of screen time he has. Seriously, he's just there, he gets slammed into a tree, and then he goes to the hospital. Ugh. However, he stops being boring when we see him on the gamma drugs. And then he becomes the abomination. And that was when he became a fantastic adversary to the Hulk. And yeah, we will talk about that soon. We also have references to other Hulk characters from the comics. Dr. Samuel Stearns actually appears in this movie. And we get to see his head mutate, teasing the classic comic book villain, the leader. Hopefully, in the She-Hulk Disney Plus show... We'll get to see him in his full glory. We also get to see Dr. Leonard Sampson. Even though he doesn't have green hair, maybe we will see him again in the She-Hulk show. As that is hopefully going to continue the Marvel Cinematic Universe story of the Incredible Hulk. Alright, now we get to the effects. These are really freaking cool, especially for 2008 standards. Even though I personally prefer Iron Man's visuals... These effects are pretty damn good, and it actually utilizes the best technology at that time. Now we have the music. It was composed by Scottish composer Craig Armstrong, who also composed the Baz Luhrmann films Moulin Rouge and Romeo and Juliet. Here he makes the music sound like you were on the run. Seriously, I'm leaving the soundtrack in the email below just so you could hear it for yourself. What about the action? Well, from the chase through the soda factory, the fight at Culvert University, and the final battle, I'm always hanging on the edge of my seat. And this is usually what many people consider the best part of this movie. And I wholeheartedly agree. So what's my final verdict? While it's not perfect, The Incredible Hulk is definitely one of the most underrated Marvel Cinematic Universe films. It has good characters, decent music, and fantastic action. Whilst the story is flawed, I still find myself enjoying it every time I watch it. And I'm going to give it a solid 9 out of 10. A good movie that smashed the big screen with flying colors. So, that's it for this review. What are your thoughts on The Incredible Hulk? Leave your thoughts in the email below. Next week, I'm going to review the final installment in the original story. Star Wars Trilogy, that being Star Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. With that said, I'm Mr. CCS, this is Movie Central, and that, my friends, is a wrap. See you guys next week, and thank you to all the war veterans who fought for our country. Happy Veterans Day, everyone, or happy late Veterans Day, as I'm posting this on a Thursday, whatever. See you next week.